Okay, hey guys, so this is me going through question six. So uh, again, I already created a new file called the question six. And again, the final answer to this part will be in the description. So that way you don't have to wait for me to build the entire part. Um, but this part isn't entirely intuitive. Usually parts that involve or revolve are not always as obvious because you are probably gonna only build like the top half or the bottom half and you're not gonna just do like sketching the whole top plane and extruding it. So here, we're clearly going to use a revolve feature and looking at this i'm going to zoom in a little bit um well, i guess before i do all that i should specify the variables so let's go to tools let's go to equations and now let's go a this should be 50 b this should be 30 c oops c should be 35 B should be equal to A times 4. So that all looks about right. And then I can press OK. And then again, I can check my equations here to make sure this is right. So A, 50, 30, 35. And then obviously 50 times 4 is 200. And then the material is going to be brass. So right click, edit material. And then let's select brass. Oh wow, that took a while to load. Okay, brass. Uh, apply, then close. Alrighty, and then we see that our answer should be in the 5000s when we start to measure the mass. So again, this part isn't entirely clear on how you should maybe build it, but here, when I'm looking at it, it's saying that the inside of it is actually going to be hollow. So when I'm creating this sketch, that means that um, I can try to use a shell, but if I try to use shell, that's going to be a little bit more confusing. Um, so what's probably going to be easier is if I create these two outlines. So what I'm going to do first, I'm actually going to create this outer outline, and then I'm using offset entities to create the inner part. And again, I'm only going to draw the left half, and then I'm going to mirror it across the origin. So let's sketch this in the right plane. And the right plane is in literally the right plane, not like the correct plane. And let's draw a vertical center line that we know we're going to um, draw about. And because, again, I'm using the revolve, I'm actually going to draw a horizontal center line as well. So this way I can add diameter dimensions so I can map the sketch as close as possible. So let's add a vertical and horizontal center line. And, and I'm going to do the outer edge first. So here I have a line that's going to go straight up. And then it goes this way. And then it goes vertical. And then it goes at another angle. Right. And uh, what I'm going to do later is draw a circle that, uh, next the outer part but i'll do that in a second so here let's add dimensions where we can so top point of this is going to have a diameter distance of b so a trick in solidworks is if you have your center line you can select the point select the center line and then just draw over to the end let's make sure i chose the correct units maybe i'm not following my own rules so this should be in millimeters grams and seconds and now let's go back to editing our sketch or dimension and then oops, smart dimension and then i can select this point select the center line and then if i just go to the bottom or across my center line it gives me a diameter otherwise it gives me a radial distance so radial diameter and this diameter distance is supposed to be B, pretty sure. Yep, so equal to B. And the angle is 15 degrees, so that's also 105 degrees. But if I, you know, you're taking the exam and you're nervous, you're probably going to just want to add a center line here. And then let's just specify that the angle between this vertical line and the center line. Supposed to be 15, right? Because chances are when you're taking the exam, 
the that angle isn't entirely obvious. So 15 degrees escape to exit that dimension. Um, and then this vertical distance is supposed to be 25. So 25. And then looks like this is saying a seven millimeter offset. And so this distance actually is not specified, but that's because there's a circle that connects them. So first I'm going to mirror this. And again, a quick trick with SolidWorks, if you don't know the if you just have one center line selected or construction line, it's going to assume that's what you're mirroring it across. Oh, but now I have two. So let's see, where's the other construction line here? Line seven. So I don't need line seven and mirror entities. Right. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a circle that is horizontal with these endpoints and let's connect them. And now let's trim the lines that I don't need. Don't need here, don't need there, don't need there. And so again, so the distance from this outer line and the center line is going to be A. So equal to A. Okay, and then this is going to have a radius of C. So radius C. And let's uh, see what I'm missing here. So these two points should be horizontal with one another and it looks like I'm missing a dimension or somehow this is still underdefined so let me try to figure that out so again like I said if you're unsure of why your part's underdefined you can kind of just select the part that's underdefined so it looks like the distance between these two lines are underdefined and so here the distance between those two points should be a so I can specify that here to here, we have a distance of A. And then what else is under defined here? Let's press escape. That's A. It's 25 millimeters tall. Um, then it looks like it just needs to know how tall this part is, right? So again, smart dimension, I'm going to choose this endpoint and the center line. And then the diameter distance is going to be equal to D. Equal to D. So press F to get a full view. And now let's add these fillets. These are both have a radius of five and it says four and that's just because it goes one, two, three, four after you revolve it. So five and then five. Like I said, so that's all the outer sketch and the inside is gonna be shell. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna use an offset entities. So let's select everything. And then let's click offset entities. And yep, so it's already going inwards for us. And we want it to go inwards about seven millimeters. And then press OK. So it looks like it also created the center lines, which I don't need. So I'm going to delete these two center lines. And now I'm just going to connect the inner parts. It looks like it also created this, which I don't need. Right, and it didn't fill it this for me, which is good, because I it don't need to be filled. So this is press L, connect here, and then connect this to here. 
Alright, so now this is a closed sketch. And I can just, uh, features, I can revolve base. I'm going to revolve it around this axis. Press OK. So again, if I look at this from the isometric view, now I zoom out a little bit, and this looks like what we're supposed to have. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create these five holes. So I'm going to look at this from the front view. Sketch. And then I'm going to select this interface here. And I'm actually going to draw a construction circle. So let's first draw a circle here. Let's specify the diameter. It looks like the radius is supposed to be C, so the diameter would be equal to 2 times C, right? Because this is only going from the center point to the outer point. So here equals C times 2, C times 2. And again, this is going to be a construction circle. I don't need to be in dimension anymore. So here. For construction, okay. Then I draw another circle, and this is going to be vertical. And for me, it's easier to actually just create a circular pattern of the feature instead of a sketch, but it's completely up to you. Now let's specify the diameter of this, which is supposed to be 10. And let's make this a cut. So now if I go to extrude cut, again, you can do through all, you can do up to surface, we're up to next, they're all going to end up with the same thing. So through all, and then in my features, I can do a circular pattern. And then I can select that cut and it automatically chooses the last cut that I made um, in the direction I'm following this circle, right? Oops, and I only need five of them. I don't need 15. Um, and it looks like I selected the entire face, which is causing problems. So this is still five. Don't need this face selected. I just want to select the edge. Boom. There we go. So we select the edge, equal spacing. 360 degrees and press OK. Now if I look at this from the front view, I have those cuts there. And now I can just look at my mass properties. So mass properties, like I said, should be around 5000, 5010.96, 5010.96. So that's how we do question six. I'll do question seven in a separate video.